Hey guys, this is Jared Gist with the East Texas Lighthouse for the Blind, and today I wanted to do a review on electronic glasses for people with low vision. Specifically, we're going to be looking at eSight, New Eyes, and C-Boost. So all three of these devices work in a similar manner. They are a pair of glasses with a screen, either in one eye or both eyes, and a camera fitted that captures that image and brings it right into the screen. So eSight originated in 2006, and they are currently in their third generation, which came out in 2017. The max 24 times zoom is pretty impressive. If you look at the remote there on the far left screen of the picture, uh, kind of looks like a Wii remote there. There's a directional pad on the top of the remote with a tracking ball there in the middle. There are wheels on either side which allow you to change the different contrast modes, clarity and saturation of the image itself. That little black box is for charging to a wall outlet. You'll notice the remote itself is wired into the headset. You do have the option of getting a script put into these glasses that are clipped into the headset. You'll notice there's a clip here next to the remote, that gray clip. You can clip that on at the back of the remote, which allows you to put it onto the side of your belt loop on your pocket or something like that. And then there's a memory card here that you put into the remote, and that allows you to save pictures that you can take, which is a pretty neat function. Because this is HDMI compatible, different smartphones, computer monitors, televisions, DVR boxes, PlayStation. So pretty neat versatility here. The OCR capability is not currently something that this device supports. The menus can be magnified, which is extremely nice. Use the remote to magnify the menus so that you can, as someone with low vision, able to read the menus and then navigate through them. The upper bioptic tilt is something that's a function of this device, so you can tilt the glasses up while still keeping them on, and it allows you to see with your usable vision what's going on around you and then also allow you to shift your gaze up into the screens of the glasses to see what else is going on if you have them positioned correctly. So a pretty neat function there. There's distance near and auto focus modes. If you get away from the auto focus mode, it takes some time to be able to, to get accustomed to these other functions. The vast contrast options are nice. We've got the full color mode. There's the black and white, white and black, blues, yellows, and greens. And then you've got the outdoor washout effect. So this is something that all three devices are battling with right now because the devices are completely enclosed. When you go out into the natural environment where the lighting, even if it's not direct sunlight, the amount of light that comes in on the sides does create that washout effect, which makes it hard to be able to see the image. So there is a bit of a steep learning curve on this device. Uh, this isn't something you can just pick up and have a really good sense of what it is capable of. I actually had to take some exams from the company before I could start showing people how to use this device. Because of all the different functions, there is a learning curve there, and it does take time. And it's one of those things where if you are not not using this device a lot, you can forget some of the functions and then you have to go and retrain and learn how to use them. This device costs about $10,000, it's $99.95, so it is a pricey device. The next device that we're going to take a look at is New Eyes. New Eyes is a military technology with a max 12 times zoom. Now that zoom can be increased to 14x if you use this little telescope here that clips on to the middle of the frame of the glasses. There is a nice hands-free mode, there's no wires from the remote connected to the glasses but there is a Bluetooth wireless remote here on the left side of the image and it basically slips on over your index finger and you use your thumb to navigate the menus. You can also access those menus from the buttons on the glasses themselves. There's buttons on the underside, on either side of the frame, and then on the right side there's a button on top that allows you to go through different contrast options as well. There is a menu accessibility magnification limitation on this device. You cannot magnify the menu, but there is a workaround for that. You can connect to a smart TV via Bluetooth, or you could hand this device off to someone else you can see and they can help navigate through the menus and so this is a little bit of a tedious process that it's a little cumbersome as far as OCR capability it does have that so there's also a full color mode and there are varying contrast options not as many contrast options as eSight the full color mode is interesting it kind of has a green film over the full color mode it just makes the full color a little skewed the removable magnetic lens cover so this is an interesting function of this particular device 
nice is you can pop these lenses out and then you can see the image kind of like it's a hologram displayed in front of you but you can see all around and behind the image with your usable vision and so it's kind of training the brain to see the image and everything else that's going on around you honestly it's easier to see the image when the lenses are in in my opinion man from the other users that we've had look at this. In an indoor setting, it does make it easier with a controlled lighting. You'll notice here on the top of the device, all those little slats in the top, that is for alleviating the amount of heat that comes off of this device since it has a battery pack built into it. It does get quite hot, and so those slats do allow for heat to escape. The app downloads and uploads. You can download apps, Wi-Fi. There's some other things that they're coming out with. You can watch TV within the glasses themselves and it does allow you to update this device as it continues to progress, which is nice because then you don't have to worry about purchasing a new device or worrying about it going out of date. It does have magnetic earbuds that you can click in underneath the frame on either side, and there is a magnetic clip above on the left side if you're wearing them. It's the charging area where you can click that in magnetically. So kind of interesting there. You also have the outdoor washout effect. The weight of the device is a bit of an issue over time it does weigh down on the bridge of the nose and it's just heavy but it, then again it's kind of nice to be able to have all the button functions on the glasses themselves with no remote in the hand the price on this device is $61.95 the next device that we're going to look at is Seaboost so Seaboost was released in 2017 it fits on the better eye of the frame that they provide on that frame of glasses they can a script in there for you and pretty self-explanatory there's a camera on there and a screen on the other side on the inside of the glasses there which you're looking at the zoom ranges between it starts at 1.5 magnification goes all the way up to 7.5 magnification even though the zoom is not as intense it doesn't go up as high you still it, it, strangely enough you feel like you're still getting a pretty good level of magnification when we were doing distance and near testing with this device in comparison to others it was almost on par or on par as far as getting somebody from say 2200 vision down to 2040 vision so it did a pretty good job with that it uses the iphone 4s camera so it's a little bit of an older technology but it does have a pretty good auto focus mode there are no other focus modes for this particular device and the autofocus seems to be sufficient so there is a wired remote which is not displayed in this picture it's basically a really simple black box there it, it fits in the palm of the hand it's just got one turn knob that increases or decreases magnification if you press down on that knob it goes from full color mode to black and white or white on black and then it cycles back to the full color mode pretty simple there because of that i did indicate how simplistic it is to use we were having older clients that were coming into and looking at this and it was easy for them to pick up and start using there wasn't a lot of bells and whistles on this device so the outdoor washout effect is still an issue the price on this device is about three thousand dollars to get a better understanding of how these devices performed we chose 16 employees here at the lighthouse for the blind and their ages range from 25 to 65 years of age. So we used the fine bloom distance chart there on the left and the near distance chart there on the right. But this gave us a, a baseline, even though we had their eye exams that we could reference from, it was important for that particular day, we got a true determination of their acuity. The purpose of this evaluation was to determine the increase in acuity with the devices for both work purposes and recreation and leisure. If we take a look at the procedure from start to finish, we first collected a baseline measurement of their acuity and then we introduced the the devices where we then collected their acuity with the assistance of the devices then we let the candidates use them within their work environment where we looked at key factors like weight of the devices zoom stability glare clarity contrast and overall quality of the device quality of the camera from that we took the top five candidates and asked them to take the devices and use them within their work environment take them home for recreation and leisure purposes and then get feedback at the end of that three weeks to determine is this a a device that they prefer over other accommodations for what purposes do they see this being beneficial different types of key tasks that we took a look at were things like reading labels on boxes at eye level at near and far distances also being able to read and determine product way above head level for instance on top racks of the warehouse where pallets were being stored there was also a look at computer use versus things like zoom text windows magnifier we also took a look at paperwork which was incredibly helpful observing people 
reading vending machines, completing near tasks on an assembly line, such as determining the marks on paper, even reading the computer screens on some of the assembly lines, and then looking at watching TV, reading scores at the bowling alley, reading bills, and reading products that you would purchase at the grocery store. All of these types of tasks were taken into consideration, and we also looked at other accommodations in place. For instance, for computer use, does this device replace or work better than the accommodations like the Zoom Text or Windows Magnifier? And just to single this one out, it did not seem to have the same efficiency that these other types of accommodations did. Now part of that was because this was a new technology, but it didn't make sense to start integrating something new when these types of combinations were already working. If we take a look at the device preference among the 16 candidates, you'll see that we've got seven for eSight, two for new eyes, six for C-Boost, and one that was inconclusive due to a decrease in usable vision. So if we take a look at the device rating among the six categories of weight, zoom, stability, glare, clarity, and contrast. For the first category of weight, you'll see that C-Boost was given a nine. Uh, it was the lightest of the three, and it proved to also have a pretty decent zoom there. We gave eSight the nine because it did have the highest level of zoom magnification, and when we looked at stability, we did give C-Boost an eight at that highest magnification. It still maintained more stability than eSight, even though eSight had that higher magnification. It seemed that at the higher magnifications, any subtle movement would really shake the device. And then New Eyes there was given the seven. For glare, clarity, and contrast, eSight was the leader on all three of these categories due to the amount of functions that were available, amount of options that you could adjust the different contrast modes and the saturation of the picture. For the overall score, eSight was given an eight, New Eyes a 6.2, and C-Boost a 7.8. In conclusion, these devices did improve both near and distance visual acuity. However, for long-term use after the three week period for the five candidates that we picked, they did not use that device at the end of that period. And so for that reason, we asked the question, why? What was the deciding factor with this? And mainly it was the fact that they had other accommodations in use. The other feedback that we received was that these devices were something that they had to remember to lug around with them in addition to everything else that they've already got. So whether that's the cane or something small like a telescope that they can fit in their pocket. And so for reasons like these, these devices did not prove to have the long-term effect that we were hoping for, that they would use Use these long term. They do have a lot of versatility for indoor use. For that outdoor use, however, when the lighting conditions change, you do have that washout effect. As we look into where this technology is headed, questions arise like what if we had an iPhone 7 camera or an iPhone 8 or 10 camera for this C Boost and the difference that that would make? Also, with companies like Crystal Vision that have been working on a new product called the Patriot, which is an all enclosed headset, it does alleviate that issue with the outdoor washout effect. And so, as technology Technology continues to develop and change. It's exciting to see where we're headed. Thanks for watching. Again, this has been a review of eSight, New Eyes, and C-Boost. My name is Jared Gist, and you can reach us at www.tylerlighthouse.org or check us out on Facebook.